I suppose I'll start. Hello everybody, um, my name is David Kerwin. Um, I'm here to talk today about Community Shift. It's uh, re-released. Uh, uh, before I go ahead, um, does anyone have a show hands? Do you know about Community Shift? Do you know anything about it before I... A little bit? Okay, so, so basically what it was is it was a... It was an open, um, a community. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, so, so it, it was a community instance of OpenShift, and uh, F Fedora had this available a couple of years ago. I, I think it's before I even joined the team. So I think it's about maybe 2020. But uh, during the uh, the move in the data center, we lost access to it because there was a couple of legal issues related to. Um, GDPR and things like that. So we used it as an opportunity to just get rid of it and then start working to try resolve some of these issues with the GDPR, for example. And so over the last, um, it's a couple of years now in the works. Like we're after redeploying a, an OpenShift cluster on top of uh, OpenShift dedicated, and we have um, we've done some of the groundwork to automate some of the tasks to make administration of the cluster a little bit easier, for example. And uh, we're now in a position where it's released and members of the community can come along and apply for space and then r run some sort of project uh, project on uh, on behalf of the community. OK, so I'll, I'll go ahead there. The um, If you want to have a, a full read of the, the announcement, uh, it's here on the community blog. It's a couple of months ago now at this stage. But uh, ha have a look at the the announcement there. So, what is Community Shift? So, it, it's the re-released Fedora Infra hosted Community OpenShift cluster, and the the purpose that we envision for it is it's a place where you can uh, host projects related to Fedora, but not that maybe not quite ready for a full infrastructure deployment. And basically, it's a place where you can run applications on behalf of Fedora. So if there's a, never an instance, for example, uh, we might be overloaded in Fedora Infra, and you wanted to take some of that workload on, you could say, hey, I'm offering to maybe host an application on behalf of Fedora, and then administrate it and run it on our behalf. So Community Shift is a place where you can actually do that then. And if you, if you were trying out some new things, like you say, hey, I want to try out something, I want to you know, spend a couple of months evaluating it, and, uh, or maybe if you're building something new, like it's a place where you can actually deploy it, and then you'll, be, you'll have access to the, the wider resources then in, in Fedora Infra. So what do we offer? Um, it, it's basically the platform, and that's it. So we give you access to the, the OpenShift cluster, like you'll have... Um, full administrative access to your own namespace. Um, uh, there's a couple of service requirements there, if you want to, to read more. Yeah, again, it's a place where you can run containerized applications. Uh, the idea is that um, we're going to delete projects every six months that would coincide with the Fedora release cycle. Uh, but of course, if, you're, if you want to run something that's more longer term, extensions are, are available. You just need to basically justify your case, like w what it is, why you need to do it, or you want to do it. Uh, and as I said already, you'll have full self-service admin to your project namespace, and you'll have full control over who else has access to it. So we give you the option where you'll have access to a, a fast group, and then you can just add or remove people in that fast group, and then it's automatically synchronized then to the cluster like the, the permissions. Yeah, so the, the quota is pretty pretty low by standard. Like you, you, you get one access, or access to one full CPU on the machine, only one gig of memory, but five gig of storage space and two pods. But of course, it's completely extensible. This is just a kind of a default. Like if you need more resources, just ask, and we can uh, we'll happily uh, increase them to, to suit your needs. Yeah, so how do you request access? Uh, if you go to the Fedora Infrastructure uh, Pagur issue tracker, you create a new issue. You can see there um, there is a kind of a drop down. Oh, sorry. Next slide. It, there's a drop down in the uh, what do you call it? Kind of templates. 
and there's a community shift template there so if you just click that it'll pre-populate all the the kind of questions that we want to know uh, answers for uh, and again feel free to like it, it's not hard like you know we're, it, it's pretty easy we're easy going like it, there's room there to like you know ask questions can i do this I, I would like to do it you know will i have access and like it, it's pretty easy going so like we, we'll happily give you resources if uh, if the um, the project is a good idea yeah so like i said uh, b because you have full admin access to your own project the the first kind of po port of call for support is the OpenShift documentation. So what I would say is the bar is a little bit higher than I want to learn OpenShift. Like, you know, you can learn OpenShift on something like code-ready containers on your laptop. It, it's more, this is a place where I want to deploy some sort of app on our behalf. So because you have full admin access, the, the, full, the first point of call would be the OpenShift documentation yourself. So if something's not working, go figure out why. Uh, if it's something like you need help integrating with like another service in OpenShift or you know you've already followed all of those steps and it's not working well yeah well then at that point then feel free to give us a, a shout and we can uh, we can help you out but again th the place where you would open uh, issues would be at the the main inf Fedora infrastructure uh, ticket tracker yeah so this is already outdated there's some more there's a lot more other things running on the cluster already but Here's a, a kind of a brief example of some of the things we're already hosting. Um, yeah, and links to them and where you can find out more. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Like, we're content light. Like, uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, again, that's the, the links to the, the places where you can find out more information. So, if you have any questions, yeah. So, am I getting this right? The question is, are, are we planning to bridge it from the data center into our, our, sorry, from the cloud into our own data center? Is that basically? So, at the moment, there's no bridge. You can only access things that are available externally in our data center. So, a lot of the main services are available externally, um, but it, if there's something that's within the firewall, uh, we would have to spend time like opening ports and stuff like that. So th at the moment, there's no plans, but uh, it's possible to do. So like, it, um, it, there's a, a supported service to have a VPN, for example, between the the OpenShift and your infrastructure. Uh, yeah, hopefully that answers. No, uh, uh, how I should be saying it is okay. services that can run your uh, no, so, Sorry, let me repeat that. So the, the question you said is, is the whole thing not, not suitable or not ready? No, no, no. It, it, the platform itself is ready for use, but it's a place where if you have a, if you have a, a project like, hey, I just came up with this idea, I'm going to build something myself, it's not ready to be run in Fedora Infra, but I want somewhere to run it, where community members can access it. That's, that's a great place for it. So like if you have a project or you see some, some new technology and you want to test it out on behalf of Fedora, like an example that I'm thinking of is I'm looking at some of the, the OpenShift AI components and I'm thinking like down the line we're going to have access to AI hardware, or sorry, um, graphics cards. And I'm thinking if I deploy this now, at some point in the future, we'll have servers with graphics cards available like in our data center, and then at that point, then I can I, I can start worrying about VPN access to, so the the community shift clusters services can then access the Fedora hardware in in the data center. So hopefully that answered. S 
so the, I think the question was, you're a Red Hat prod or sorry, Red Hat uh, team. You're running services internally on another OpenShift, and you want it's mostly focused on community-related things. You want to then, is it possible to run this on CommunityShift? And yeah, of course it is. Yeah. So if you want to apply for resources, go ahead. Yeah. We happily take it. Just keep in mind, like we don't have infinite resources, but we have. Uh, as long as you're not like you need like 50 CPUs and 300 gigs of RAM or something like you know, as long as it's reasonable, we can we can accommodate it. Yeah, so that's pretty much all I have. Um, like I said, if you have um, if you have any more questions or you want to talk about how to, I, I think I, I'll update the slides and I'll put them on the. I'll attach it to the schedule so all the links and resources that you know you'll be able to access them in there yeah. leave it there then if you're if you guys are happy thanks So, so I raised the. So I, I'm asking a specific question about um, uh, for Hotbox analytics. I'm the, the guy raising the hey, I want to. Oh yeah, okay. I saw, yeah, I saw the ticket here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's all. Like, can I get to the data center? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, what's the? What options do I have? Because what we want to effectively do is the REST API approach to accessing data, the data number database, is just it's not sustainable to actually do analytics in any kind of real time, right? However, the Postgres I wouldn't say it's necessarily the wrong answer, but there's going to be a lot of work to get the, the VPN configured, because it may not, um, because it's OpenShift dedicated, there's only very specific things supported, and if it doesn't, if it requires customizations and stuff, um, it's going to be difficult, and they might just say no. But look, it's po I'm sure it's possible to do it. Another thing you might be able to do is maybe you can deploy some sort of system within the firewall that can export or you know, provide, actually another example, we have an AWS account, so if you, could, you could quite happily request resources to export something from the Postgres database into the cloud and then consume it into, open, into the community shift that way. Okay. So you could have maybe snapshots, monthly or weekly snapshots, and I mean, that might be good enough for your use case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't need real time, right? Like, mm. the community doesn't need to be like, hey, what's everyone doing right now? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. We just want to be able to get to the point of, you know, that Yeah, of, of data yeah. Data, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So how would that get shipped? And is that something that, you know, we can make that asset CP of like how do you guys would you guys reliably restore that back of AWS and, and not adding a whole bunch of burden on the uh, the whole uh, recovery that would have to happen on a weekly and monthly basis to get that data, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean 
if I was thinking about how would I do it, I would probably, like, you know how to get, you, you already know how to get this information you need now via the bastion, right? Yeah, so, uh, Postgres, once I'm in Postgres, I'm good. Okay, so yeah. if you can produce the scripts, the export scripts or something, we can hook it up to an Ansible playbook. The Ansible playbook can be run periodically. That'll put the data somewhere, and then we can just synchronize it up to AWS. So, I mean, it's so just... So we're trying to leave the data as raw as possible. Yep. So, like, we just literally want the messages table just as it is, because we want to let people... I, I don't want to predefine what people are pulling from the messages, yep. because they're writing the JSON manipulation in the Postgres layer, right? So we tell Postgres, hey, you know, abstract, pull all package names from package-related topics, and just mass do it, right? And then we can get a list of all packages and dates, and then, you know, all that kind of fun stuff, right? So we, we could define it as... Everything's possible. I, I don't think the problems are not going to be technical. It's probably going to be political. Like, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> my, my first question is like, who is this guy? Does is do I have a contract with him that you're not going to misuse data? Like, like it's community data, so it's like, is there going to be PII in there? But see, that's the thing is, it, it, I, I can make the same argument of this, you just go to the REST API, you just dump the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So right. if you're able to get access to anything via the, like say an unauthenticated API, I would say fine. It's probably yeah. fine. Uh, so it, the problems are not going to be technical. Like it, it'll be but very easy. The, like the, the how, why are we doing this? And then yeah. the, and that's the thing too is we don't on the from the comp side, we're really nervous about we don't want to break trust in the community. Yeah. We don't want people to think this is nosy that we're yeah. spying on people. It's not about individuals. It's about like are we growing as a community? Yes, no, because we want it to be data driven. So wh what I would do is I'd maybe at some point during Flock, why don't you try grab myself and someone like Kevin and m maybe we can sit down and try come up with a plan to write that ticket. Okay. Uh, because it, 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 I don't think there's anything technically impossible there. Like that should be very easy. Export or synchronize the database up to RDS if that's better. We, we have full access to the, uh, I think we have full access to the AWS infra, or sorry, the infra, uh, AWS services. And we can put it in a, in a region that the RDS instance can then access community shift. So I don't think there'd be any trouble doing it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll grab you two. Yeah. Okay, th I'm actually out of time. I didn't expect to actually use all that time. So thanks for coming. Um, and yep, yeah, chat to you during the week, hopefully. Thank you very much, David Carwin, for speaking on Kim.